Calcium hydroxide, a material known more commonly as lime. I want you to keep this material in mind as you watch the following. 7,500 BC, Turkey. 7,300 BC, Jordan. 79 BC, Pompeii. 14th century, Spain. 20th century, the US. You might be wondering what these fantastic artworks have in common with calcium hydroxide. And this is precisely why I'm here today. I'm here to tell you what the link is. Some of you might have heard of calcium hydroxide not as a building material. In other words, not as a painting material, but as a building material. And you'd be right, because until the arrival of the Industrial Revolution, until 1827, when Portland cement was invented, the main building material used by civilizations throughout the centuries and throughout just about the entire planet was calcium hydroxide. But before I continue revealing to you the beauties and mysteries of this highly intriguing material, I'd like to tell you something about myself. I'm an accredited wall painter conservator who has been working in the field of cultural heritage for the past 30 years. I am based in Florence, Italy, and apart from writing historical fiction and gardening, I have one lifelong fascination. And I'm pretty certain that by now you know exactly what that fascination is. It's calcium hydroxide. So why am I so fascinated with this material? Well, it is an old material created by mankind to build mankind as we know it today. And it's a material that's on the verge of extinction. It's a material that is dying before our eyes. So what is calcium hydroxide? Well, in very simple terms, it's the result of deconstructing a stone and reconstructing that same stone in a different shape or form. It's an extremely ancient technology that has been developed using a very modern concept, and that concept is reverse engineering, or what we call in the field of conservation, experimental archaeology. And one of the purpose for the development of lime was to do something very intriguing to render that which is intangible, beauty, into something extremely tangible, a stone. Now, what I would like to do is to explain to you the reverse engineering of this fascinating material, but in order to do so, I need you all to use your imagination. I'd like you all to draw a circle in your mind, and I want you to put a mountain on top of that circle. I'm going to take you from that mountain on a journey around the circle, and lots of very exciting things are going to happen. So if you're all ready, if you've all drawn your circle, you've all got your mountain, we can begin. I want you to imagine that your mountain has stones high in calcium carbonate. You're going to fill a truckload with these stones, and now you're going to drive them down your circle, and you're going to stop in the first quarter. You're going to put your stones inside a kiln. You're going to fire up the kiln to 960 degrees Celsius. And two things are going to happen. The water content and the CO2 are going to disappear from the stone. And a chemical reaction is going to take place, whereby the calcium carbonate is now going to turn into a material known as calcium oxide. Now, calcium oxide is a fantastic stone. It is strong, it is noble, it is brilliant white in color, it is thirsty of water, and if you touch it with your bare hands, it will burn you just like fire. I want you now to move your stones from the kiln down your imaginary circle, and you're going to stop on the bottom section. You're going to put your stones inside huge vats of water, and now you're going to witness 
one of the most fantastic chemical reactions created by Mother Nature. It's a thermal reaction. What you're going to see is your big, strong, noble stone decompose in front of you. It's going to turn into a soft, mushy paste, very similar to cottage cheese. The thermal reaction is such that the water is now boiling and bubbling and steaming and it's spitting everywhere. And if that water spits on you, it is going to burn you just like fire. What you are witnessing is a second chemical reaction where the calcium oxide is now turning into calcium hydroxide. It's turning into lime. You're now going to move your calcium hydroxide from the vats of water, and you're going to move up your circle, and you're going to stop at the final quarter. And this is the moment. This is the moment when the magic and the alchemy takes place. This is the moment when human creativity collides with technology and produces an artifact of impressive beauty and amazing durability. This is the moment when you, now a wall painting painter, standing on a scaffolding, you've received your calcium hydroxide, you're going to mix it with sand and make mortar, you're going to plaster the wall. And while your mortar is still fresh, you're going to mix your pigments only with water, and you're going to begin to paint that wall. And as you're painting, right before your eyes, a third and final chemical reaction is taking place. The calcium hydroxide inside the mortar is changing yet again. Water is evaporating from the mortar now, and CO2 is being introduced. And your calcium hydroxide is now heading back to that mountain. Your calcium hydroxide is turning into stone. Your calcium hydroxide is becoming calcium carbonate yet again. But not only is the calcium hydroxide turning back into stone, the pigments you've applied on that mortar, those two are mineralizing, those two are going up the mountain, those two are becoming stone. From a chemical point of view, there's no difference whatsoever between the stone you originally took from the mountain and what you've now produced. But from a visual point of view, Oh, from a visual point of view, the difference is enormous. You have not just produced a stone. You've produced an artifact of wondrous splendor, of amazing durability, and with colors that will sing throughout the centuries. You have produced this, the Raffaello rooms in the Vatican. You have produced this, Masaccio in Florence. You have produced this, the Sistine Chapel, one of the most magnificent wall paintings created in the Western world. What I've just described to you is a painting technique that developed in Italy during the early Renaissance, and it's known as the Bon Fresco, the good fresco. This is a painting technique that we conservators and academics have studied quite a lot, and we understand very well how the mechanisms work. Nevertheless, our ancestors, throughout history and throughout time, have implemented lime technology in a myriad of ways and with dozens and dozens of technical variations of which we today do not know much. It is my belief that myself as a conservator and many of my colleagues and many of the professionals that work in the field with us, I'm talking about the art historians, the geologists, the architects, the engineers, the archaeologists, the scientists, none of us have fully understood just how sophisticated our ancestors were when implementing lime technology on ancient wall paintings. And the proof of that lies in the fact that today, in 2018, in this world of heightened technology and knowledge that we live in, there isn't a single person capable of replicating from a technical, physical, chemical, and structural point of view some of our most marvelous wall paintings. I'm talking about the wall paintings 
that we have in Egypt, or the wall paintings in India, or the fantastic examples in Southeast Asia, let alone the marvels in Latin America. And the reason why there isn't anybody that knows how to technically replicate these wall paintings is because we simply do not know how they were painted. We have lost a piece of history. We have lost a piece of knowledge. And it is precisely because we risk losing knowledge that I decided to become a conservator and have dedicated my life to the preservation, conservation, and restoration of wall paintings and to the study of lime. In preserving the legacy of ancient civilizations, I know that I am preserving culture. And culture is the foundation on which civilizations grow and evolve. Culture is nothing else than a legacy of knowledge left to us by our ancestors. And it is our duty not only to use that knowledge to better ourselves, but to preserve it for the benefit of future generations. Remember the cycle of Lyme. Let me put it to you this way. Culture is the oldest meme on planet Earth. And ancient artworks is the technology used to transmit that meme. If there's one thing I've learned in my career as an art conservator and in studying the structure of artworks is that human evolution is not a progressive line that moves upwards and forwards irregardless of social awareness. Quite the contrary. Human evolution is like a spiral that can move upwards or collapse downwards according to our own personal choices, which is why you, all of you, must not allow the past to be erased. We cannot afford to forget. We simply cannot afford to forget our past, our legacy, and our ancestors. So what's next? What can we, the conservators working in the field, do to save a technology as ancient as Lyme technology? Well, baby steps are beginning to take place in the form of a project promoted by the Tokyo National Research Institute of Cultural Pro Properties. And thanks to the very hard work of the conservator, Mr. Yoshifumi Maikawa, who together with a group of international wall painting conservators has began to gather data on a global level regarding ancient lime-based wall paintings. Our ultimate aim is to do exactly what our ancestors did, reverse engineer ancient wall paintings in order to understand how they were executed. This information for us conservators is vital if we want to preserve ancient wall paintings and guarantee that they will still be standing there for future generations to benefit from. Again, I'd ask you to remember the cycle of Lyme. Some of you might be wondering if you can contribute to our quest to save the ancient technology of Lyme. And you can. And you can do so in very, very easy ways. For example, the next time you decide you want to paint your home, opt for Lyme-based paints instead of synthetic ones. Are you a gardener? Fertilize with Lyme. Are you a dentist? Embrace calcium carbonate technology. Are you a tuber that likes slaking Lyme in your backyard? Continue posting your videos and divulging to the public in general the many, many benefits of this multifaceted material. Now, are you an artist? Why don't you challenge yourself with a painting technique which is almost as ancient as humanity itself and learn how to paint a fresco, the same painting technique that fascinated and mystified Michelangelo himself? But most importantly, 
If you're involved in the building industry, I'd ask you to please embrace the highly ecological material that calcium hydroxide is. And if you already have embraced it, please continue promoting a material that history has proven to be both sustainable and extremely durable. And to prove that, we have artifacts made out of calcium hydroxide that are still standing today and that were built 7,500 years BC. But finally, if there's one thing I'd like you to keep close to your heart, one thing I'd like you to do at some point of your life is this. Wherever you are in the world, the next time you enter an ancient building that houses an old wall painting and you find yourself marveling at the beauty before you, ask yourself one question. What is it that our ancestors wanted us to marvel at? Was it the beauty of what they painted? Or was it the beauty of what they knew? I'd like to dedicate this talk to a man whose academic courage has greatly inspired me, and I hope will inspire you too. I'm talking about the author and journalist Graham Hancock. And I'd like to do it by dedicating a quote from the book, The Restorer. And the quote is this. Time is nothing else than a spiral that progresses or recedes according to the whim of life. We, humanity, are the mere mortals that pedal that spiral. Thank you very much for your attention.